All right, welcome back to Biology. My name is Mr. Kubeski. Uh, we've been talking about genetics the last couple of times we've gotten together. Uh, the first time we talked, we talked about basic genetics like dominant recessiveness. We learned about some vocab. We talked about uh, Gregor Mendel. And then in the last time we got together, we actually talked about some more advanced genetics. We talked about co-dominance and incomplete dominance. Well, today we're going to go a step further. <clears throat> we're still going to be talking about dominance and recessiveness. But first, we're going to talk about them when they're linked with the sex chromosomes, and then we'll talk about dominance recessiveness when there are multiple alleles and which one shows up and how that all works, okay? But we're going to start today by talking about the sex link traits, uh, and we'll go from there, okay? Now, if you'll remember back from the last unit, Unit 7, when we talked about meiosis and we talked about chromosomes and things like that, we learned that the X chromosome enlarged and carries several genes on it, including genes for like color blindness, male pattern baldness, etc., the Y chromosome is small and car carries little to no information other than the information on how to become a male. Okay, so keep that in mind as we go through here. Okay, so sex linked traits are located on the X chromosome. It's a type of complete dominance, meaning that it's, you know, bigs and littles again and that the one will completely cover the other. Okay, but the thing is, sex linked traits are more likely to appear in males because they only have one X chromosome. And I remember I uh, mentioned that the sex link traits are located on the X. The Y chromosome does not carry any allele to cover up whatever the X chromosome gives you. So let's say I get a chromosome, uh, an X chromosome that has some kind of trait on it that I may or may not want. I can't do anything about it because I have my Y. I am stuck with whatever is given to me on the X. So the Y cannot cover the genes given by the X. Okay? Females then are often called carriers because since they do have two X's, one of the X's may dominate and cover up the recessive trait, including color blindness. Okay? So here's how we're going to show sex link genotypes. Okay? We're going to use the X and the, the letters X and Y, male, female. Okay? So obviously females, we're going to use two X's. Males, we're going to use an X and a Y. But since the gene is only located, the allele is only located on the X chromosome, the allele we're actually going to attach to the X. We're going to write it like an exponent. Okay? So here we have a dominant R, there's a big R, and then the recessive R. So this female would be a carrier because she has the recessive trait, but it doesn't show it because she has the dominant R. Okay, the male has the dominant R, but you'll notice there's nothing next to the Y. Well, that's because, remember, the Y can carry no information. So whatever letter I get as a male here with my X chromosome, that's what I'm stuck with. Okay. So again, an example would be color blindness. Now, if you're watching this and you can see a number in the center of this circle, then you are not colorblind. If you cannot see that number, then you are colorblind, okay? But you don't need to write any of this down, but I just wanted to uh, kind of give you an update on what color blindness is before we continue to talk about it. It's a recessive trait, so color blindness is a little c. It affects 8% of males, and it's very rare, but it does occur in females, and it's a confusion between red and green and people with color blindness may have difficulty uh, you know, in their daily lives and their choice of career, but for the most part, they can live normal, healthy lives. Okay? So let's cross a non-colorblind man with a carrier mother. Okay? Now the male, the father, is going to be X and Y, okay? and the female is going to be X and X. We're going to start with that. Okay? I'm going to write the parent's genotypes. Now from there, I'm going to write the little exponent, the little uh, allele that's attached to the X chromosome. Why do I not write a letter here with the Y? Remember, the Y can't carry any information. So the little letter C, or the big C here, can only go on the male's X. Okay? The mom, since she's a carrier, has a big C, but the carrier means that she carries the recessive trait. She's heterozygous. So she gets a big C and a little C. And from there, I just do the crosses as normal. Okay? I bring dad's XC down and his Y down. Notice I put the Y in the back because we always read it XY. So we might as well go ahead and do that then. Mom's X uh, big C I'm going to bring across, and then mom's X little C I will bring across as well. Okay, so let's look at the possible phenotypes from these genotypes. In this one, we're going to have a female that is non-colorblind and non-carrier. We're going to have a male here that's non-colorblind. We'll have a female here, but the female is a carrier of the trait. And now we do have a male that's colorblind here in the bottom right corner. So this is how males that are colorblind, this is the reason that their parents may not be colorblind, okay? It's because the mom carries the trait, but dad can't do anything about it to cover it up, okay? Good. Another example might be hemophilia. Uh, hemophilia, if you're, uh, if, you, if you're big into history, you might know something about hemophilia. Uh, I, I want to say it's the Russian uh, royal family had a history of hemophilia in it. 
and uh, and that there was a problem with some of the princes, whether they had hemophilia. And you can kind of ask your history teachers about all that, but we'll talk more about that later. But we're going to do an example problem with hemophilia. Hemophilia is the recessive. Hemophilia is just a disorder where your blood does not clot normally. Okay, it continues to flow, uh, and like an open cut and things like that. To 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 a normal person, I shouldn't say normal to a person that's non-hemophiliac, um, a cut will cover up within seconds or minutes, depending on how big the cut is, a uh, person with hemophilia, that won't happen. It'll continue to flow, and you have to put pressure on it. And, and even simple daily tasks can be very dangerous and even deadly to someone with hemophilia. Okay, So let's cross a normal, non-carrier mother okay, with a hemophiliac man. Okay, So the dad is a hemophiliac, so I'm going to give him a little H with his X. Mom is a non-carrier Okay, so she gets two big H's with her X's. Okay, so what are the chances that their children will be hemophiliacs themselves? Okay, so I put dad on top, mom on the side, I do the cross. Okay, and the top left here, actually the top left matches the bottom right. So there's a 50% chance that we'll have a female, but if that if we do have a female, it's a 100% chance that female will be a carrier. Okay, now it's interesting the way that that's worded. Okay, like if for say I would ask you a question like, what are the chances that their females will be, uh, that their daughter will be a hemophiliac? I would only look at the left side of this, uh, this Punnett square. Why is that? Well, the reason is because the right side of the Punnett square, these are the boys over here. This is the chances of them having a male. So if they do have a female, it's a 100% chance that that female will be a carrier. Okay, But it's a 50% chance overall that when they have a child, that it'll be a, 50, that'll be a female carrier. Okay. Uh, here they have a male that's normal, and then here they also have a male that's normal. So no matter what, when these two, two parents have children, their children will not be hemophiliacs, but the danger is that their females, their daughters, will be carriers of the disorder. Okay, good. So that is sex-linked traits in a nutshell. Okay, You're just going to kind of use that exponent, you're going to use the superscript, it's uh, sometimes called, uh, to, uh, to show that trait, but remember, it's only on the X uh, chromosome. Okay. So now let's move on to multiple allele traits. Now multiple allele traits are exactly like they sound, okay? They're traits that are coded by three or more alleles, okay? So although you will only have two alleles for a certain trait, there are more than two choices, okay, for those two allele spots. And there's two examples that we're going to cover, okay? We're going to talk about blood types first, then we'll talk about eye color here in a second, okay? So your blood type is controlled by three alleles for the same gene. Those alleles are, we're going to use I's and A's, okay? Now here's, I'll kind of explain why we do that. If... I have a big eye, okay, the big eye is the dominant. That big eye also carries, okay, an, an allele for either A blood type or B blood type, okay? But the eye, the big eye means that I do have a marker, a protein on my cell, uh, on my red blood cells that has, that marker codes for either A or B blood type. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that here in a second. If I get a little I, the little I means that there are no markers on that blood type for that little I, okay? So A and B are co-dominant, meaning they could both show up, but the I is recessive, okay? And that might be a little confusing, but let's do an example here. I'll show you what I mean, okay? So let's talk about the genotypes and phenotypes for the different blood types, okay? If I get two big I's and those I's have A's on them, then I have type A blood, okay? Now, type A blood means that my marker proteins are for A blood type, okay? So that means when my white blood cells go around, they should see these little diamonds here, these triangles. If they don't, they're going to attack whatever cell is there, okay? What if I had a big I A and a little I? Well, remember, the little I is recessive, so as long as I have this big A, that means I also have type A blood, okay? Same is true for B. If I get I, B, I, B. I have B blood, or if I get IB, little i, that means I also have type B blood, okay? So how do I get AB blood type? Well, that would be if I had two big I's and I had an A and a B attached to each one. That would be AB. Now, AB blood is sometimes known as universal recipient. What might be the reason for that? Well, the reason is that as the white blood cells go along, they're used to seeing both the B blood type marker and the A blood type marker. So you can actually give someone with AB blood a type A blood transfusion because the white blood cells are, are used to seeing these diamonds already, so they will not attack the A blood. Whereas if I had A blood and I was giving, uh, given B blood, my white blood cells wouldn't recognize these uh, markers for B blood and they would attack. Okay? What if I got little I, little I? What would I do then? Okay? Well, little I, little I is recessive. If there are no markers. We call that blood type type O, okay? since there are no markers on that blood. 
And this is the reason that O blood types people are called universal donors, since they don't have any marker proteins on the cell uh, membrane of their red blood cells. They can actually give blood to any of these other three blood types because the white blood cells will not recognize uh, that they are not supposed to be there. Okay. So a heterozygous type A male, what does that mean? Well, if he's heterozygous, that means he's big I, little I. Okay, and if he's type A, that means the big I gets an A with it. Okay, so there's two different things that I'm, I'm using here. I'm using heterozygous for big I, little I, and then type A means that the A goes on the I here. And then cross with a homozygous type O female. Well, that obviously can only be one thing. That's little I, little I. What are the children's probable phenotypes? So I do the cross. Okay, I get a 50% chance that that child will have type A blood, and I get a 50% chance that that child will have type O blood. Okay. Let's do another one. Homozygous type AB. Now, why do I call it homozygous? That's because there's two big eyes. Even though there's a different allele attached to that eye, okay, the uh, big eye, again, remember, means that it gets marker proteins, okay? So I had IA and IB. Cross with homozygous type B, so it's big I, big I, and they're both Bs next to them, okay? So what are the probable phenotypes of these children? I do the cross. Again, 50% chance that that child will have AB blood and a 50% chance that child will have B blood, okay? But no matter what, that child we're going to consider homozygous. One more, okay? Heterozygous type B, heterozygous type A. Heterozygous, big I, little I, I put a B with the I. Heterozygous, big I, little I, I put an A with the I. I do the cross. What are the probable phenotypes? Well, now I actually have a 25, 25, 25, 25, okay? I got a 1 in 4 chance for any of the four blood types. I could be AB. I could be A, I could be B, or I could be O blood type. Okay, now you'd be surprised how often blood typing is used to do uh, different, you know, parental testing to find out, you know, whose baby belongs to whom. You know, if this is so and so's father. You know, uh, a paternity tests, things like that. They can do sometimes just with simple blood typing. Okay, and we'll do some of those problems later on where you can kind of see that. Just as a heads up, because this always comes up, uh, and since I, you're obviously listening to this, you're not going to get a chance to hear me talk about it in class, but RH factors are what we call the plus or the minus. Like, for example, I'm A positive blood type. I'm A plus. Okay, that means that I not only have the A marker, but I also have this plus marker. Okay, I have the, the a second marker there to identify it as having, uh, being a my blood type. Okay, if I'm RH negative, that means I don't have the secondary uh, marker. Okay, it's not a big deal unless the mother is RH negative and she's having babies that are RH positive. Uh, because actually what ends up happening is that the baby, uh, the second baby born, actually the, the white blood cells will end up attacking uh, that baby and its blood because it's not used to seeing it. And we'll talk more about that in class if you're with me. But if you have questions, please feel free to contact me or you can find tons of information on this stuff out there. Okay, Just for fun, O positive blood type is the most common. Uh, the least common is AB negative blood type. But people that are AB negative, okay, Good news for them, they can receive blood from anybody else that has negative blood type. Okay. So a quick review, I know I'm running out of time. Sex-linked traits, only the X chromosome can carry the trait. And the two examples we talked about were colorblindness and hemophilia. Remember, you're going to have, if it's, it's going to be an X and a Y, but only the X can carry the trait. So I use the little uh, superscript. Okay. Multiple alleles, same thing. Three or more alleles will code for one trait. Uh, you're usually going to still have the dominant, the recessive, the big, and the little, and then you use a superscript to do those ones, okay? And blood type and eye color are the, are the examples. If you have questions, please feel free to contact me, jkabuski at gocathedral.com. Uh, visit the website, uh, mrkabuski.wordpress.com, or feel free to uh, follow me on Twitter, at uh, Coach Kabuski. Uh, uh, look forward to working with you. Hope this helped, and uh, we'll see you next time.